Today's video is brought to you by eWin Racing, the best source for gaming chairs and desks for those long gaming sessions. We have a playlist of our eWin chair and desk videos linked in the video description below. Save 30% off of everything using the discount code TECHDEALS. More details at the end of the video. Nikki comes in with a CPU upgrade question and provide some interesting details that will modify this answer from what I think a lot of other people might give. They have an ASUS B450F motherboard. They've got a Ryze, Ryzen 7 3800X CPU. Good CPU. 32 gigs of RAM. Yay, good for you. They've got an RX 6900XT GPU. Sweet! They play AAA games on 1440p and they want to know if they should upgrade the CPU or just leave it and keep it. Well, my standard answer would be upgrade. You have a nearly $2,000 video card. You have a 6900 XT, 32 gigs of RAM, 1440p, mm. AAA games. Now the Ryzen 7 3800X is fine. If you've only got one monitor, you don't need to upgrade. However, you're a premium user. You bought a premium video card, you have a premium monitor, you're playing the latest and greatest AAA games. There is a real difference in going to a Zen 3 chip. They are faster, they are smoother, they are more responsive. And you can currently sell your current chip for a pretty reasonable price. I mean, the Zen 2 chips have not lost a lot of value. The, uh, Nikki could probably sell that chip for, I mean, unless you have another machine to put it in for $250. I just wish you had a different motherboard. That's, thank you, that's the problem. You have a B450 board. Now, you do actually technically have support for Zen 3 on that board. However, I have seen hit and miss results in trying to put Zen 3 on those boards. It wasn't designed for it. Uh, the BIOSes exist for some of them, but not for others. I have put a Zen 3 chip on the 400 series. I don't think it's a very good idea. And I also believe that if you are the kind of person who has 6,900 XT money, 1440p money, did she say it was 144 hertz? No, she didn't no. say that. And you're looking at buying like a Ryzen 9 5,900X or 5,950X, which is the only thing that's worth upgrading to. If, you're, if you've got a 37 or 3,800X, nothing less than a Ryzen 9 Zen 3 makes any sense. And quite possibly, a 5950X is what makes sense, because if you're going to make the leap, you've already got eight cores of Zen 2. Yeah. If you're going to upgrade, go to 16 cores of Zen 3, or just don't waste your time. You need a, you need a new motherboard. I mean, you don't need one. I would recommend you do it, because you're going to get a board designed for your chip. You, are, you, you don't risk any compatibility issues. Mm -hmm. I have had previous gen boards on Ryzen that claim to support the chip. There's a BIOS update. I updated the BIOS, I swapped the chip, and it didn't work. I have found that it's hit and miss between the chips, and it's hit and miss between the boards. It does work. A lot of the time. Until it doesn't. I spent several hours specifically with one gigabyte board trying to get a chip working on it, and it just, it wouldn't. It would do a different chip. In other words, I took out that Ryzen, was this was a Ryzen 7, not a Ryzen 9. I took out that Ryzen 7, I put a different Ryzen 7 in, exact same model, worked perfectly fine. The Ryzen 7 that didn't work on that board, worked perfectly fine on another board. Fussy. You probably aren't going to have spare CPUs like we do. Upgrade your board. Now the question is, does she need to upgrade her board? And the answer is no but it is a premium experience. Would $1,000 spent on a 5950X to get 16 cores of Zen 3 plus a really nice B550 or X570 board, would that in any way, shape, or form hurt you financially? Or is it just your play and weekend beer and pizza money? Because if it's your play, weekend, beer, and pizza money, do it. Th do it. it. It is a nice upgrade, but it is not a earth-shattering, change your world, alter your computer's experience to the nth degree upgrade. And if that money is better spent in your hip pocket national bank, if that money is better spent 
earning you interest or in the stock market or your 401k or IRA if you've not maxed those out, then save your money and just live with your 3,800x because it is a nice upgrade. When I go back and forth between those, I notice because I use both of them back to back. It's not required, but you do have a nice graphics card. Are you a Toyota person or a Lexus person? Your video card is a Lexus. The rest of your system is kind of Toyota now. Thoughts? No, I see I see it a lot. Is People don't seem to know what their use case is and what experience. I think a whole lot of people are just completely missing the user experience they want to get out of their computer. And it's, it's quite fascinating to watch. Maybe, the, maybe I think a lot of people don't realize the correlation between what it's like to use a computer and what the various components do to give them that experience. I think the average person understands that a Lexus and a Toyota will both get somebody to work just fine. They will. And I think the average person understands that a Lexus will do it in a more comfortable seat with nicer leather and a more powerful engine and less road noise and a better stereo. I think the average person gets that. I don't think the average person gets why a Ryzen 9 5900X is a better user experience than a Ryzen 7 3800X if you're playing 1440p AAA games with an RX 6900 XT because I'm sure a lot of people would say, well, it's not going to give you that many more frames per second. No, it won't. It'll give you a couple, but not enough to make a big deal. Well, that's dumb. It is dumb if you think the only part of your computer that matters is how many frames per second a game can generate. If you think that's all that matters, then you'd be correct. Fun fact. That's not the only thing. If you have a 6900 XT or an RTX 3090, and you're playing at 1440p and what 60 frames per second, what if I told you that a two core, four thread Pentium gold CPU was all that was required for an average? Are we just looking at benchmark numbers? Yep. Oh. A two core, four thread Pentium gold will do it at 1440p on a 3090 or a 6900 XT. Average frame rate numbers are pretty useless for comparing CPUs. They're good for comparing graphics cards. They're great for, if you want to compare a 66, 67, 68, and 6900 XT, average frame rate charts are awesome, but that's exactly what they should be used for, 100%. CPUs, they suck because they don't demonstrate user experience. No, not at all. Hopefully that helps her out. Ewin Racing has a wide selection of chairs to fit all shapes and sizes of gamers, ranging from petite to cuddly, they have something for every type of gamer. Not just sizes, but colors and material options as well, including red, blue, purple, pink, orange, and more, plus cloth and leather choices. We have over half a dozen chair and desk videos in a playlist down in the video description below. We also have a very special offer just for Tech Deals viewers. Save 30% off of everything using discount code tech deals using our link in the video description. We have used eWin gaming chairs for three years in our office, sitting on them for up to eight hour marathon live streams. They are very comfortable and we are happy to work with eWin to bring you this special discount and recommend eWin for all of your gaming chair and desk needs.